Welcome to ECE 302. This is lecture 3.6 on Bernoulli random variables. I am Professor Stanley Chan. Today we are going to begin a new series of studies on various discrete random variables. Bernoulli random variables are the first one that we are going to look at. To start with, let me describe the Bernoulli random variable. Imagine that you are flipping a coin. The probability of getting the head is p. And so the probability of getting the tail is 1 minus p. This is the probability mass function of the Bernoulli random variable. And you can see that it only has two states. As soon as you know the probability of getting the one state, you know the probability of getting the other state. So this is an extremely simple probability uh, mass function. And you may wonder how can this ever be useful? How often that we will come across uh, in flipping a coin? So what I want to do today is to talk about this random variable, this extremely simple random variable. And perhaps this is the simplest random variable that you can ever think of. Why? If you only have one state, this is no longer a random variable. It will become a deterministic number. In more than one state, this is already a Bernoulli random variable. So we want to look at this Bernoulli random variable. We want to look at its properties. And then I want to talk about its applications. I want to tell you two stories about how this Bernoulli random variables can be used in engineering problems. One is what we call the randomized algorithm. The other one is the social network. Here is the outline of today's lecture. We are now in lecture 3.6. And you can see that uh, in the following lectures, we're going to learn a few more other random variables. Right now, we are on the first one. And then there are a couple of topics we want to cover today. We want to define the Bernoulli random variable. We want to talk about the expectation and variance of the Bernoulli random variable. And finally, we want to talk about the applications. The definition of a Bernoulli random variable is given as follows. Let x be the Bernoulli random variable, and therefore x will have two states, either 0 or 1. The probability of getting the 1 is defined as p, and the probability of getting the 0 is defined as 1 minus p. This p is called the parameter of the Bernoulli random variable. If p equals to 1 half, then you get a fair coin. Then the probability of x equals to 1 will be the same as the probability that x equals to 0. They will both be 1 half. The notation of a Bernoulli random variable is as follows. We write x with a small snake, and then we write Bernoulli. And inside this Bernoulli, we have a parameter p. So this says that I am defining a random variable x. It's drawn according to the distribution, which is called the Bernoulli distribution. This Bernoulli distribution is parameterized by a number p. And what is this p? The p is a constant between 0 and 1. So how do I define a fair coin? A fair coin. I would say that x is a Bernoulli random variable uh, with parameter 1 half. As you have learned in the previous lectures, random variables, they are generative methods. What it means is that if I tell you the probability distribution or the probability mass function of a random variable, you can generate different samples according to this distribution. Therefore, in this generative process, p is often given. 
Now, certainly there are inverse problems. In this case, you will be given a bunch of x, and then you will be asked to go back and to find the p's. So we will leave this discussion of the inverse problem to later chapters. For now, we will want to look at this random variable x, which is drawn from this Bernoulli distribution. Given the Bernoulli random variable, we can talk about its mean, its second moment, and also its variance. This proposition gives you the formula of these three quantities. In particular, the expectation of x is p, the second moment is p, and then the variance is p times 1 minus p. How do we show all these? Well, let's look at the expectation of x. By the definition of expectation, we have two states. The first state is 0. The probability of getting that state is 1 minus p. The other state is 1. The probability of getting that state is p. And therefore, you multiply all these numbers and add them up, you will have p. So we have proved the first result. The second moment can be calculated in a similar way, where you look at x squared. So here you have 0 squared times 1 minus p plus 1 squared times p. That will also give you p. How about the variance? The variance of a random variable x is the second moment square uh, x square minus the first moment x with a square outside. So you plug in the number, you will have p minus p square, which is p times 1 minus p. So we have found the second moment and also the variance. So now we can ask a very interesting question. For what value of this p, we can make the variance of the Bernoulli random variable maximized? So this question is about, let's say we're flipping a coin. The coin will either give you head or tail. Okay, and then we ask, now this coin can have a probability p of giving you the head, and it can go all the way to 0 to 1. So for what value of p that the variance or the fluctuation uh, that you will have, fluctuation compared to the mean, that will be maximized? Is it p equals to 0? Is it p equals to 1? Or is it p equals to a half? What do you think? Let us recall the definition before. And we have shown that the variance of a Bernoulli random variable is p times 1 minus p. So how about we try to take the derivative of this function? So this function, if we take the derivative with respect to p, This thing will give us 1 minus 2p. Then if I set it to 0, I can show that there is a stationary point of p being 1 half. Now, whether this point is going to be a maximum point or the minimum point, uh, that's also very easy to check. You take the derivative twice of this function then you can show that it will give you minus 2. And so this is less than 0. And therefore, this p equals to 1 half is the maximizer. So what does it mean? It means that when p equals to 1 half, the variance is actually maximized. We can plot 
the variance as a function of p. So here is the variance of x, which is p times 1 minus p. If you draw it, you will get this curve. Okay, uh, here you will get 0, here you will get 1, and in the middle you have 1 half. So at this point 1 half, what is the corresponding variance? The corresponding variance at this point would be 1 half times 1 minus 1 half, which is 1 fourth. Okay, so this is 1 fourth here. Now you may ask, how can this be possible? Why is the variance maximized when the coin is a fair coin? The reason is that if you have an absolutely unfair coin, meaning that uh, the p is 1, then what does it mean? It means that it always gives you head. Would there be any variance? There would be no variance. Because since you're always getting a head, there's no way that you will be able to get a tail. And so there's no fluctuation at all. The mean will always be 1, and the variance is absolutely at 0. The variance will be maximized when you have a fair coin, and so you have certain chance going to the head, certain chance going to the tail. Therefore, the answer to this question is that the variance of a Bernoulli random variable is maximized when p equals to a half. Although the Bernoulli random variable is extremely simple, we can use it to generate other random variables. This is one example. It's called the Rada Marcher random variable. In this random variable, instead of defining the states as 0 and 1, we define the states as plus 1 and minus 1. Furthermore, we define that the probability of both states to be 1 half. So this is a very special case of the Bernoulli random variable where the probabilities, they are equal. The following proposition says that how can you translate a rather much random variable to a Bernoulli random variable and how do you go in the reverse direction? So it says that if x is a rather much random variable, then you consider this x plus 1 divided by 2, uh, then it will become a Bernoulli random variable. Now, wh why is this the case? Well, what is x plus 1 divided by 2? This is what. If x is a rather much random variable, that means x will either give you 1 or x will either give you zero, uh, minus 1. So there's plus 1 and minus 1. If this is plus 1, then x plus 1 divided by 2 will give you 1 plus 1 divided by 2, and so that will give you 1. If x is minus 1, then x plus 1 divided by 2 will give you 0. The probability, with probability, the probability of getting this 1 is 1 half, because this happens when x equals to plus 1. This happens with probability 1 half as well. Okay, and therefore, if x is a rather much random variable, then this quantity, it will become a Bernoulli random variable with a parameter 1 half. Vice versa, if y is a Bernoulli random variable with parameter 1 half, then you can show that 2y minus 1 is a rather much random variable. I'll leave this as an exercise for you. Now, let me describe two very interesting applications of the Bernoulli random variable, which you may not have seen before. The first application is modeling randomized algorithms. And this problem is very, very useful in modern data analysis. Imagine that you have a large linear system of equations. So here you have a vector of y's 
and then you have a big matrix that contains m rows and n columns and here is your uh, x vector which contains n elements so our question here is that if this m and n they are extremely big numbers imagine that you are looking at large network or you're looking at air traffic control that kind of problems and so this linear system is extremely big we ask can we quickly compute this matrix vector multiplication is there a way that we can do an approximation if such a calculation is extremely complicated so why is this problem difficult the difficulty is that usually this matrix is so large that it has to be stored across different storages so you can imagine that some columns are stored in one hard disk and some columns they are stored in another hard disk because they're just too big and so of course if you have infinite computing power you can load all these uh, uh, numbers into one processor and just click a button and then it wait for a long 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 time we will be able to calculate this but what we ask is that can we do this more efficiently this problem will arise in many many engineering applications you can have a million node social network for example on facebook you have millions of users you can model this as a problem for gigapixel deconvolution imagine that you have a camera that can take gigapixels and then you want to solve a deblurring problem and that will become a gigapixel deconvolution problem and effectively you need to solve this extremely large scale inverse problem the problem will also arise in air traffic control where you want to calculate the optimum routing from one place to another place in genome analysis you also have problems like these where you have extremely large scale linear systems so how can this Bernoulli random variable an extremely simple random variable help us solve this problem I'm going to talk about one technique it's called the randomized algorithm it's not the only algorithm that can solve the problem but for certain applications the randomized algorithms does uh, buy you some computational efficiency so how does this work we all know that with a brute force computation of the previous matrix vector multiplication the ith entry of the y vector can be written as this now why is this the case imagine that you have a matrix you have a vector and then you have all these uh, y's the yi will become this row times this column so you have all the xj's stored here and then you have aij's and then you are summing over all the j's so you have aij okay so you sum over all these rows and then you have all these numbers in the columns so that would be the brute force computation to get the yi now I'm going to define something called a randomized computation. I will define a Bernoulli random variable. I would call it P, okay, PJ as the parameter of this Bernoulli random variable. And then IJ is either a one or zero. It will give you one with probability PJ. It will give you zero with probability one minus PJ. So effectively, to get ij, you just flip a coin with certain probability of pj. And then I'm going to define an estimate or the approximate of the yi. The approximate is defined as the summation of aij, xj. And then I have this very funny term of ij divided by pj. So in this equation, ij is a random variable. It's a Bernoulli random variable defined in this way pj is not random pj is a deterministic 
constant. So I am forming this y i hat using this equation. My claim is that this is going to be a very good approximate of y i. But before I show you why this is going to be a good approximation, I want to help you think through why this can help you improve the efficiency of the computation. Now, remember that this i j, this random variable, is either 1 or 0. If the random variable gives you 1, then certainly you need to calculate this aij, xj, divided by pj. You need to calculate this number, and then you need to add to this sum. But if this ij gives you 0, then you don't even need to calculate anything. You just skip that entry. So what happens is that imagine that you have a very, very long array of numbers. And then these numbers will start from 1, 2, 3, all the way to a very big n. And so let's say uh, i1, you need to take it. i2, you don't. i3, you don't. OK? And so over a lot of choices, then some of those will be picked, and some of those will be skipped. And if the skip will occupy a big chunk, then you will save a lot of computation by using this randomized scheme. All right, so now we want to ask a question. How can this ever be a good approximation of yi? Because now I am skipping samples, and then how can this uh, 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 skipping process still be able to approximate to the true one? The question can be answered by analyzing the expectation of the yi's. We claim that the expectation of yi hat is the same as yi. Why? Well, because yi hat is the submission of aij, xj, ij, divided by pj. j summing from 1 to capital N. If you apply the expectation on both sides, what will happen? Well, the expectation certainly will apply to here, but the summation has nothing to do with the expectation, so the expectation can go in. Okay, now this expectation applies to all these constants. These are constants. We have no influence to the expectation. So what it means is that the expectation can actually go all the way into here. Now let's carry out the calculation. If the expectation is inside, then what do we have? This will give you pj because of the definition of this Bernoulli random variable. Okay, because ij is Bernoulli of pj, and we know that the expectation of a Bernoulli random variable is just the probability. So now you have pj divided by pj. So these two will cancel out. And so you can show that this expectation of y i had is exactly this summation. And this is what? This is just y i. Right? OK. So what we have shown is that the expectation of this y i had is going to be the same as this yi. In other words, if you have an n that is large enough, okay, n being the number of samples that you have, which is usually OK when you have a large data set, and it could, and could be a billion of data points. So when this n is large enough, then this approximation, this y hat, could be approaching to the true yi. Now, of course, you can ask, what kind of p that I want to plug in into this problem? The choice of this p is a very interesting question. And people have proposed various ways of designing this pj. 
If you make all the PJs the same, then you have a uniform distribution across. Then you just randomly pick samples in this row. But people have also studied other approaches. For example, people found that you can set P to be proportional to the magnitude of a column. Okay, so for example, this column has a larger norm, then you set the P there to be stronger. So if you're interested, I will refer you to a very interesting article written by this group of authors uh, in uh, Science Journal on Computing back in 2006. They have a lot of discussions of how to apply this randomized algorithms to solve matrix vector multiplication as well as solving the inverse problem. Now, let me also describe another application of the Bernoulli random variable. This is extremely interesting in the sense that with the social networks today, you will want to learn about this problem. So imagine that you have a social network and it is an extremely large social network. You want to analyze and what would be the analysis tool that we can use? First of all, we, we need a model. Now, this study, of course, of, on the social networks has been here for uh, many, many, many years. And I'm only describing one of the simplest models in all the social network literature. So it's not going to be a complete picture, but it at least gives you a flavor of what people have been doing out there. So. This network is called the erdos rene graph. And before I discuss this erdos rene graph, I need to tell you what do I mean by the graph. So imagine that you have a social network on Facebook or Google. And uh, all these graphs can be denoted as nodes and edges. OK, so you could be this node a friend of yours could be another node, and so on. And if you can, if you have many, many email exchanges, I'm going to draw a link between the two of you. Now, this is certainly a graph, but how do you describe it on mathematics? One way to do it is to convert this graph into what we call the adjacency matrix. Let me show you how to do it. Suppose you have four nodes here. We call them 1, 2, 3, and 4. Here I can construct a matrix that has four entries. 1, 2, 3, and 4. And 1, 2, 3, and 4. Any edge between node i and node j, I will have a 1 in the matrix. So for example, 1 is connected to 2. And so 1, 2, I will have a 1. And since this is an undirected graph, I will have uh, 1, 2 as well. Same for 2 and 4. So 2 and 4, I will have a 1. 2 and 4, I will have a 1. 2 and 3, I will have a 1. And so 2 and 3, I will also have a 1. And finally, 3, 4, I have a 1. I have a 1. What about others? Uh, since they're not connected, I will just put the zeros there. OK, so this is an adjacency matrix. And this adjacency matrix is a binary matrix. It contains values of either 0 or 1. OK, so if I tell you this graph, you will be able to construct this matrix. And if I tell you this matrix, vice versa, you'll be able to construct this graph. Now, of course, the graph is not limited to just 1 and 0. You can put different ways and so on. The graphs are also not limited to undirected graphs, so you can have directed graphs. In this case, you may not have a symmetric uh, adjacency matrix. But these are all beyond the scope of this course. Okay? For now, let's just focus on this symmetric binary graph. So what is the erdos rene graph? The erdos rene graph says, that all these AIJs, they are drawn as an independent random variable according to a Bernoulli distribution. And all the IJs, they have the same parameter P. 
Uh, certainly, I'm making assumption that all these ij's, I'm only calculating i uh, less than j, okay, because it's symmetric. So what is the meaning of this? There are a couple meanings. First of all, all these aij's, they are Bernoulli, okay, with the same parameter p, and they're independent. And so the presence or the absence of an edge uh, between two nodes, here, this node, these two nodes, and these two nodes, uh, they don't influence each other. So if you and this person is a friend, this friendship will not affect the friendship of another pair of uh, uh, relationships. Now, this may not be true in the actual uh, social science, but in this Bertolt's René graph, may we are making that assumption, which is a, a reasonable assumption to make. Now, and on the other hand, what, what else can we see from this Bernoulli random variable? This p tells you the density of the edges. If p is a large number, so p is large, then what happens is that you go back to the adjacency matrix. If p is a large number, then the adjacency matrix A, you will have ones uh, uh, for most of the entries. Okay. Now certainly on the diagonal it will be zero because we are not assuming a a a, a self uh, relationship. Okay. But if p is large, okay, then your a matrix uh, will have a lot of ones. In other words, when you try to draw the network, you will have connections everywhere. Vice versa, if your p is small, then you only have a very sparse set of connectivity. And so many people, they are isolated, and then there's only a small group of people that are connected. So by tweaking this parameter p from small to big, you will be able to see the different levels of connectivities. So this will give you a graph, and this graph can model a small community. Certainly for large community, this structure does not hold. But for small communities, this independence assumptions sometimes work. So in engineering, what people have been interested in studying is that assuming this Erdos Rene graph, uh, what are the properties that we can derive? For example, if I assume an Erdos Rene graph, uh, for how many steps that I would be able to connect this node to another arbitrarily chosen node in the space. Other questions that we can ask would be, suppose I give you this network structure, can you tell me what is the underlying probability P? This would involve an inverse problem, which is also very interesting to solve. So I hope I have given you two non-trivial examples of the Bernoulli random variable. Uh, these examples are very, very application driven, and they are very, very real, and you can find that in actual engineering problems. So I hope that you can tell your friends who are also studying probability and statistics that the Bernoulli random variables are not just limited to flipping a coin a very, very naive problem. Bernoulli random variables have a lot of usage in modern machine learning and data science. With that, I will conclude this lecture. If you have any question, please feel free to send us emails or post your questions on Piazza forum. Purdue students, we encourage you to work on our homework problems to make sure that you can do some of the problems. Thank you very much.